Hello and welcome to my lab. I've been pretty busy uh, milling the parts for this machine here, the whiteboard machine, and uh, I think I've got just about everything done, so uh, it's time to start assembling things. And the first part we're going to look at is this guy here. This is the first of the motor mounts, and it's going to go right here to allow this motor to be attached to the system. And uh, Probably the biggest part of making this part was trying to cut out this entire pocket all the way uh, through. So I've got a big half inch end mill and uh, I tried a couple of things to try to make it easier to cut all of this material out. Um, I pre-drilled it, which uh, I don't think helped as much as I was hoping it would. So in future, I probably just probably just go ahead and cut it normal. Uh, and then um, this year, uh, bored out a hole. There's a little lip. It helps aligning the motor if you've got that little uh, hole there cut nicely so it fits right in there, helps you center it. Uh, so I've got that cut with the boring head and the rest was just a bunch of work with the end mill trying to cut out uh, all these different features. Uh, so let's go ahead and add it to the machine. So now that that's attached in there, uh, I can slide this right up. I've already um, attached the coupler at the height it needs. It kind of matters uh, exactly how deep you set this thing. Then before tightening this down, I'm gonna wiggle it around and make sure everything's looking centered before I do. Yeah, okay. And this collar just tightens down like that. All right, so that is that axis. And that will work later. And moving on, uh, we'll look at the next part. These are the, well, it's one of the plates that mount to the wall. And uh, this is going to mount several things, um, the end stops, as well as uh, another motor mount and the, a pulley housing. Uh, so the placement of these is pretty uh, important. So what I've done is actually built it into the rest of this here. So I've got a, a tool that's just for assembly. This is going to mount right into here. You'll see a little bit better in a sec. Uh, and then also it will mount to the plate just for the sake of assembly and putting it in the right spot. So, this I just made off camera because it's just a couple of blocks. Uh, but this guy here um, really just took me a bit of time to straighten this thing out and uh, bore out this hole as a little clearance for uh, a bearing you'll see later. Other than that, it was a bunch of drilling holes, tapping holes, the usual stuff. Uh, so let's put it on the wall. Okay, uh, with uh, these plates on, there's a bunch of stuff to add, uh, like these little blocks here. I made a lot of this stuff um, off camera because it's very simple. This just has a couple holes in it and it's gonna act as the end stop here. So uh, let's go ahead and knock out some of the simpler things before there's uh, more complex stuff to uh, assemble. So I'll go ahead and put on a bunch of blocks. We've got the uh, these first here. Okay, so I guess we'll do the other end stop then. Uh, this is going to be 
the end stop on this side as well as um, the belt tensioner. So this is a more, more complex part. Um, we've got some space for the belt to go through here. And uh, let's see, this will make a bit more sense when I get to the pulley on. So I've got this for an axle, just a shoulder screw. Put the pulley on there, or the idler actually. And then screw that into here. Now I don't know if this is actually going to handle the tension that I'm going to put on this, but uh, I want to find out, so that's what we're going to try. So that'll uh, spin freely and allow the belt to go. And then this part here, you can see I've got a, a pocket cut out here that fits this guy. And so it'll slide in and out from there. I'll put a little bit of grease in there to make it a little nicer. And I've got a screw that'll go into here. And once this is on the plate, uh, the slider won't be able to just pop out like this. So if I push the screw in, it'll be forced to push against the belt. So the belt going from here to there will then hopefully be tensioned. Okay, now for the uh, vertical drag chain or cable carrier, whatever you want to call it. This is just going to handle the uh, cables as the uh, mechanism moves. So you got a cable that goes in there. I've already 3D printed brackets uh, for both ends. So let's just add it in there. These are fun to play with. Look at that. All right, while we're working with uh, drag chains, here's the horizontal one, the big one. And uh, I've got a little bracket that will attach to the carriage, and then these screws will attach to the drag chain. So let's go ahead and add that. And then that will go in there when the time comes. All right. But first I'll have to add this to the wall. So. Uh, just a little bit of uh, an L channel here, aluminum, and uh, we'll go right under here, and that'll hold the bottom of the horizontal drag chain, and also uh, the wires at the end over there. So let me just attach this to the wall really quick, and then we'll be back. Okay, now that that is on, I can go ahead and add this guy. I went ahead and added the uh, tapped holes on the mill. I think I can get that one in there. It's an unnecessarily long drag chain, but I didn't see a point in pulling off extra bars that I didn't need because I wouldn't use them anywhere else. Although now I'm thinking maybe I should. Eh, that's probably fine. Okay, there we go. Okay, now let's look at the horizontal motor mount. This one was pretty fun to make, so let's take a look at uh, how it was milled. First, there's two large pockets that have to be milled out, so uh, it's time to grab the long uh, half-inch end mill. I think the depth of cut on this is two inches. So I took it down in a couple of bites.
once we have the two pockets cut, I can move on to uh, cutting and boring out uh, the center holes. So I've got a couple of holes I'm going to drill here. The first one is the center hole, and then uh, these side holes are actually going to be clearance holes so that I can get uh, my Allen wrench in to uh, tighten the screws that you'll see later. Once I've got those cut, I'm going to expand the hole with the boring bar. This thing's a bit uh, disconcerting to be running in the middle with uh, an up uneven mass flying around, but it works pretty well. Now for a test fit. Spot on. Now I'm just going to drill uh, down in here and this is going to give me a clearance for the shaft and uh, there's going to be a uh, pillow block in here so we'll go ahead and cut some M4 holes for mounting. I had to get a tap extension to get down in there. Here's how it looks so far. Looking good, uh, but we still have to get the sides. So that's what I'll do next. I'm just gonna hog out some metal here with the uh, good old bitey. And this will uh, reveal the uh, mounting holes that we'll use later to attach it to the wall. And I can just clean up some edges here with this small end mill. And I'll turn it sideways and cut the final face here. Here I was trying to cut circles because that's a fun challenge. It's like advanced etch a sketch. Then it'll be the same deal on this end, cutting the uh, clearance hole for the shaft and also the uh, M4 holes to mount the uh, pillow blocks. And then of course, while we're here, uh, we'll go ahead and cut the clearance holes for the uh, screws that'll mount this to the wall. Now that that's all done, it's time for assembly. So I'll go ahead and throw the pillow blocks on first. Then we can run the shaft through to make sure everything fits. Looks like it's good, so I'll go ahead and put the pulleys on. To recap, uh, one of these pulleys is gonna go horizontal to control the carriage, and the other one is gonna go to the top belt to synchronize it with the bottom. It'll make more sense later. Then I'll go ahead and add the coupler for the motor. And of course the motor. Now that's all one unit and it should fit right on the wall. And here's the uh, pulley housing for the top. It's much the same, so we'll just uh, go ahead and assemble that and put it on up there. Okay, with these on, I think I might try to run the horizontal belts. Uh, the vertical belt is going to need some special considerations, so um, we'll uh, probably do that next time. 
uh, but the horizontal belts, I think I might go ahead and try to run those. Uh, so let's go do that. Okay, I think that's everything that I can put on now. Um, there's a little, like, it, it works pretty well. There's a little bit of um, finagling to do. The uh, belts, these were meant to be just the right size that the belt would uh, uh, go on either side, but they're interfering a little bit, which is causing some friction. So I'm probably gonna just go in and shave off some, some thickness on those. But other than that, this is working really well. So, these two belts go across and keep the top and the bottom synchronized because these um, these aren't very good structural elements, these linear rails, and then the whole thing can kind of flop around. So the belts on the top and bottom are meant to uh, keep them in unison. Um, I'm kind of surprised how well the belts work for going this far. Usually I wouldn't use belts um, for this long distance because even with the tension they're kind of floppy, but I don't think that's going to matter too much at the speed we're going to go. So that's kind of cool. That's one of the things I was testing is to see if you can get 10 millimeter, uh, yeah, 10 millimeter width belts to go that far reasonably, and it seems to be working. I don't know if I'd call that reasonably for a regular machine, but it's good enough. Um, so unfortunately, right now it's kind of dead in the water until we hook up all the electronics, but um, we'll be doing that next time. So that's going to be exciting. Uh, I'm going to probably just do some finagling on these blocks off camera. And next time we'll be uh, installing the electronics everywhere, so hooking up the motors, getting the axes uh, to run and tuned. And then uh, there's going to be a box on the wall that'll control, that'll house all the controls and everything. And then we should start, we should be able to start uh, drawing on the whiteboard. So that's pretty exciting. It took us a while to get here because uh, I over-designed this in terms of total number of components to be machined because I wanted a lot of... Uh, experience. I wanted a lot of practice on the uh, milling machine, which I did get, and I feel quite comfortable with it now. Um, but yeah, that took a long time to do. So stay tuned for uh, all the wiring and uh, starting this thing up next time. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.